Hello, good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's Target Jobs webinar on how to choose and secure your perfect role in finance. We have a really interesting um, set of panellists today who will be here to discuss all things finance uh, for you, which we will introduce you to in a moment. Um, but just before that, I will run through how this webinar will go. So essentially, it will be about 40, 45 minutes of us um, going through some talking points around finance, getting some really useful insights from our panellists, um, and then having a bit of an open conversation. And towards the end, about 15, 10, 15 minutes towards the end, um, we will answer any questions that you have. Um, so to ask questions, if you use the questions tab and just write any questions you have, you can do this at any point. Um, during the webinar and then um, at the end we will go through them with our panelists and answer those for you if you also use um, the upvote system so any questions that you see that you really want answered as well if you just um, put a thumbs up and like it and it will move it to the top so we kind of know which are the most popular questions um so yeah that is how it will go and i will hand over to our panelists they are majority um accountancy firms but not all so we will have um different insights there are lots of sectors as we know to finance so yeah lots of interesting insights so i will pass you over for everyone to introduce themselves so if i start on my screen it's clockwise i will start with christina if you could um tell us a bit about um where you work the kind of vacancies you offer and just a bit about what you do yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Lacey. And thanks, everyone. It, it's great to um, chat to you today. Um, so my name's Christina. Um, I work within the HR team and lead on our recruitment um, for our graduate roles here at Opris. Um, so Opris is a leading advisor um, in project finance, um, which is the financing of large infrastructure projects. So things such as wind farms, university student accommodation, the building of new roads, new hospitals, um, and so we work on projects all over the world um, and we're involved in a variety um, of different ways. So whether that's on the advisory side, um, so helping raise the finance that's required for the project um, or on the financial modelling side. So by building a model um, to show the investment and the life cycle of that particular project. Um, or it might be that we're auditing um, some financial models um, that are required for projects. Um, we're quite a small organisation, so we're a team of about 70. Um, so we're split across two offices. So we have our head office um, in London um, and then we have a smaller office in Toronto um, as well. Um, and the role that we uh, recruit for is our graduate role of financial uh, financial modelling analyst. Um, and so this really is sort of the, the first step in a career um, in financial modelling. Um, and being a sort of smaller organisation, we're able to have a real sort of focus um, on career progression through the organisation. So we don't typically make um, any lateral hires. So when someone joins at Opris, we invest in their um, learning and development and provide that training um, to turn new graduates into experts, into um, financial modelling um, and promote them as they sort of um, gain that experience. So. Um, being a smaller organisation, um, we're not in a position to be able to offer sort of internships and work experience. It really is that sort of graduate role. Um, but um, we people get sort of real um, experience when as soon as they start. So once they've completed their training, um, we're a great believer of um, learning by doing. Um, and so you get that engagement with um, projects pretty um, early on. Um, so you can build up um, and yeah, sort of start your, your career in financial modelling. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about opera and the role. Cool. Thank you, Christina. That was a great introduction. <laughs> Thank you. If I move on to um, Charlotte, please, if you want to introduce yourself and um, vacancies you offer and a bit what, about what you do. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Charlotte Walsden. So I'm the Senior Early Talent Advisor at Moore Kingston Smith. So my role is to manage the recruitment across our early talent pathways. So Moore Kingston Smith are a professional services firm. So primarily business advisory and accountancy firm and we work with clients across a range of different sectors we work with kind of family businesses large corporate clients lots of non-profit clients as well entrepreneurial businesses um and yeah we have clients at our core so our, our goal is to support our clients with their with their goals and the idea behind our trainee programs both being school leaver or graduate is to work towards becoming a chartered accountant. We do also have pathways on the tax side of things, so becoming a chartered tax advisor as well. 
Um, and early talent is a big part of our growth strategy. So this is our 100th year of business. So lots of celebrations going on, lots of recruitment going on. Um, so I'll be able to talk a bit more about that uh, throughout the, the next hour or so. Great. Thank you, Charlotte. And if I move across to Sarah next, please. Yep. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm Sarah. I am from um, Assets. I work within the early careers team here. So we manage the recruitment process. In terms of business, we're quite similar to the kind of all the things that Charlotte has mentioned. So we're an accountancy firm based in the UK and we're within the top 10 of the accountancy firms in the UK. Uh, but we do also have bases in Europe. Uh, we offer a range of different services to our clients, including accounting, tax, audit, business and advisory. And um, even within that, there's lots of kind of subdivisions as well. So corporate finance, wealth management. So yeah, there's, there's a huge range of different uh, services that we offer to our clients and um, we have a clients from a range of different services and um, different sectors sorry so tech agriculture sports and um, hospitality um, and typically our client base is small to medium enterprises and um, so kind of a range of different size of clients and scale of clients as well uh, we have over 80 offices across the UK so I'm not sure where everyone's calling from today but probably there's going to be an office near you and um, we are quite a new as a brand we rebranded in 2020 so you might not have heard of assets before but you may have heard of some of our kind of former names and um, so yeah we rebranded in 2020 so we're quite new and um, but we're growing all the time we've kind of taken on quite a few acquisitions in the last few years and, and there's no kind of plans for that to stop the growth is just going to continue to grow and um, so we take on a range of different roles and um, within our trainee sort of um, part of our business so we have graduates school college leaver roles so apprenticeships and um, also summer internships and 12 month inter uh, programs as well for people who have placements and sandwich years at university and um, this is across all our different service areas so it could be within audit could be within tax uh, business advisory so yeah we offer different opportunities within our different business areas and um, we also offer the professional qualifications so that is kind of the end goal for most of our trainees as well so starting off at the lower level of qualifications say AAT for example uh, working towards sort of the chartered qualifications whether it's tax or or the kind of chartered accounting qualifications. This year we've taken on or are planning to take on over 400 trainees and um, that's across all the different forms of trainee roles um, and we're set to grow that by 50% for the year ahead so lots of growth and exciting times ahead as it's. Definitely thank you and it's interesting as I said there are so many sectors within it so it's great to hear some examples thank you and if I move across to Emma next please. Thanks very much, Lacey, and thanks everybody else who's uh, already gone before me. You've been my life a lot more difficult. Uh, so, uh, Sarah, I'm basically just going to mirror exactly what you've just said. So, I'm calling from Mazars today. Uh, as I said, my name's Emma. I've been uh, at Mazars for just under five years now, so part of the furniture at this point. Hope to be able to be the right person to ask all of your answer all of your questions today. Um, so, Mazar, and um, we are a French firm. We've been around since 1945. Robert Mazar, so the company was his namesake. Um, so, similarly to um, Sarah and Charlotte, we are are a sort of auditing and accounting and professional services firm. Um, so our sort of main three tier um, uh, service lines are audit, tax and advisory services. However, there are sort of a, a wealth of um, different pathways that fall under those big uh, service lines. And um, we also offer um, similarly school leaver opportunities, uh, industrial placement, graduate roles. Uh, we've also started to offer summer internship schemes and work experience opportunities. So there's lots of different ways that you can get involved uh, even that be it you know through work experience internships or, or looking for a permanent role with us as well and um, we are international firm so we've got about 300 offices across the world and uh, we are fully integrated which means we work as one big partnership across the globe and um, but specifically within the uk we've got 13 offices which we offer all of our entry level routes into and um, so i hope that's kind of given you a little bit of an idea in terms of who we are um so yeah thanks so much for having me today yeah, that's great. Thank you, Emma. And last but definitely not least, uh, Lizzie, if you give us a bit of insight, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Lizzie Kelk. Um, I'm Recruitment Assistant Manager at MHA. Um, you might know of us as McIntyre Hudson, but we've just recently rebranded to align better with our international network, which is Baker Tilly International, which is one of the 10th biggest um, accountancy networks um, in the world. Um, so similar to what everyone else has just said, so fourth time of hearing it, very similar in terms of the services we offer clients. So um, our main service lines would be um, kind of audit, tax, um, accounts um, kind of really focusing on the, that client advisory service as well so I think that's one of the really 
interesting things about joining um, professional services and the accountancy sector is that it's not just about the numbers and I'm sure we'll go into that more as we progress through but we really partner with our clients and understand their businesses so we can provide them the best service possible so our people are our, our greatest asset um, so again we um, work across all different every sector you could think of um, we're kind of building those specialisms as well so moving more into kind of um, environment sustainable development sectors things like that but other than that you know it's kind of retail agriculture finance and um, everything really so um, similarly to the other firms um, coming in as a trainee you get a really great exposure across a different sector of clients and also again we work with um, kind of small owner managed businesses right up to kind of your large corporate household names that you all recognize which is great as well um, and kind of ultra high net worth individuals advising them on everything from their kind of tax um, and audit needs um, and then we do have some other kind of um, trainee roles as well more in kind of corporate finance and um, VAT that kind of thing as well so but the majority would be audit tax accounts um, again we take school leavers who would come in and do um, AAT um, before or ATT before moving on to their professional qualifications um, but all of our trainees receive full study support um, and mentors you'll join with um, a whole kind of intake of trainees at the same time um, so you've got that peer support as well as you work your way through your qualifications um, so yeah if you're a graduate you would come in and do either ACA um, or ACCA or CTA if you're going in, down the tax route so yeah nice to see you all Great, thank you for that, Lizzie, and thank you all for joining us today and for your introductions. Um, so yeah, as this is a, a lot of people watching will be wanting to know how to secure a career in finance, I suppose it's important to start with why and why it's it's a career that um, that someone would be interested in going into. So I think we'll start with the first, first talking point, which is essentially what makes a career in finance um, and specifically your area of work so enticing and what would be kind of you know the top reason for students um to consider a career in finance so i will start again with the same <laughs> same clockwise so if i start with christina for your thoughts on that please yeah absolutely um i think um the thing that um, makes it so exciting working in project finance um, and the work that we do is that we're working across tangible assets. Um, so it is actually possible to see the projects um, that you're getting to work uh, work on and be involved um, in. Um, so just to give an example, we went on a company retreat to Brighton um, and we had the opportunity to travel on the I360, which is the moving um, observation tower. Um, and we also took a rather choppy boat ride um, out to one of the um, offshore wind farms. So those were two projects um, that we'd been involved with. So it was great um, to actually see them um, and see sort of like the finished product. Um, and I think also the other thing is just the variety um, of projects that, that we're um, involved with and get to work on. So we cover a wide range of sectors. So renewables, social infrastructure, uh, transport, telecoms, um, and it's all within um, and across different countries as well. So there's lots of opportunity um, to learn about different things um, and about the different processes, depending on sort of what country um, and what sort of project we're working on. Great, thank you. Yeah, it's interesting to know how much variety there is. I mean, yeah, someone who doesn't have a background in finance at all, it's interesting to see just how much you can, you can do. So yeah, thank you for that, Christina. <laughs> um, if I move on to Charlotte, please. Oh, I think you're Sorry, on mute. I think, I think I'm back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I clicked it a few times. Um, but yes, as a business, the work that we do obviously makes a, a meaningful difference to the businesses and the communities that we work with. Um, as a trainee, I think Christina said a key word there, which was variety. Um, we, we want all of our trainees to have a, a a lot of variety in their role so early on in their career, working across a range of different sectors, um, a range of different types of clients, and really getting a, a generalist experience, building that foundation, studying while gaining hands-on experience before then having the opportunity to specialise as they go down the line and start to learn, you know, what you particularly enjoy doing and kind of thrive within. 
you know, one of the particularly exciting sectors we have at Morkingston Smith is our media sector. Our West End office, because of where it's based, works with lots of theatre companies and marketing agencies, which is just one of the sectors that trainees can get experience in early on in their career and then work out whether it's something you might want to specialise in down the line, uh, which is, a, I think, one of the key things that makes it enticing for us. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting that you said that you can kind of enter a enter a sector of finance and then within that kind of find your way and what interests you most within it. So, yeah, that's really insightful to know. Thank you. And Sarah, next, please. Yeah, I think my answer probably gonna, is quite going to mirror the same as what's already been said. But I guess just to kind of add to that, generally speaking, just from a career perspective, accounting and finance is something that is always going to be needed. It, it might develop and it might um, kind of change forms, obviously, with technology. A lot of the actual skills and tasks that are going to be required will change. But it's something that is kind of like a good future proof career that you can have. And I think by getting into accounting and finance, as has already been said, but within an accountancy firm, you can build that foundation and you can take that anywhere. So ideally, yes, we'd love you to have a lifetime career at assets, but realistically, you can take that career anywhere you want, whether that's an industry or practice, you can develop yourself and your skills. So it's just a great sort of role um, that you can get into, that you can have a real career that can take a lot of different directions. You don't kind of need to stay with where you've, you've started. There's lots of different paths you, you can take within that. And I think it's it's open to so many different skill sets. So the whole kind of traditional view of you need to be good at maths to, to be a good accountant, that's absolutely not the case anymore. There's so much more to it than that. Um, and it's not just about number crunching. Uh, you know, a lot of, of, of it is to do with communication and in being working with your clients and building those relationships. And you get to learn a lot as well about different industries. So yes, you become a professional accountant, but even you're learning so many skills about different industries and getting different knowledge and how they work and, and what kind of, you know, different regulations within different industries as well so I think variety is probably the key thing but also just that that the career in accountancy can take you so many different directions yeah definitely it's interesting that you said about um being good at maths as well because I, that's one of the talking points we had and I think probably something that there'll be a few questions around so yeah kind of dispelling that myth I think is, is is quite useful so yeah thank you um Emma did you have anything you wanted to add yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. Thank you so much, Lacey. Um, I, was, I don't want to overdo sort of, you know, overkill on the answer, but I, I mirror exactly what the girls were saying. I think it's having the scope and variety to be able to work with loads of different, you know, industries and businesses and really getting stuck in and, you know, making those key relationships because effectively what you're doing is be it as an auditor or an advisor, you're going into a business and you're building key relationships with people here who are at the center of that business. So you're really getting to sort of, you know, into the nitty gritty of it. And I think that sort of experience um, in today's world is is invaluable and, and also you know things like becoming a chartered accountant or any sort of financial qualification will put you in such good stead for whatever you want to go in your career basically and I think also depending on you know which firm you join if you wanted to go for a smaller firm and you wanted to have a look you know you wanted to maybe work at, on a smaller community or location or if you're wanting to look with more of an international scope it's just looking at what opportunities that you want to follow and what interests you and I think if you know if traveling or seeing the world or working with international clients is something that you want to do then potentially looking at maybe a larger firm that's got more sp scope for that mm -hmm. or if you're wanting to work somewhere which is you know maybe potentially closer to home and you're working with you know smaller businesses and it's a lot more on the personal level then potentially looking at a smaller firm that can do that for you so again I think it's probably just looking at it in that respect as well as what can you get out of the experience of working at a firm and, and what can a firm do for you so kind of looking at it a little bit selfishly as well I'm yeah. allowed to say that <laughs> <laughs> no, it's important to say and it's the truth. So yeah, thank you. That's really useful. Um, Lizzie, sorry to put the same question to you last, <laughs> but did you have That's anything fine. additional you wanted um... to add? Maybe just to add, because um, I've come, I've been with the firm a year now, but I've come from a completely different sector. And I can honestly say that within our firm and probably everyone else's, we've got a really clear pathway of progression as well. So you can really see like what you need to do to get to that next level. So there's always something to work towards. Um, and obviously with that comes um, salary increases um, and, you know, more responsibilities, more like advisory that you can get involved in. Um, one of the other things that I've really loved about kind of being in the accountancy sector, which I didn't necessarily expect, is um, our partners really kind of invest in our staff in so many different ways as well. So there's lots of kind of different social events going on. They're always ordering in kind of um, pizza or they'll be taking them out to kind of escape rooms or um, doing all kinds of, you know, riverboat cruises on the Thames. There's all, like so much more um, to it as well. So it's a real good balance of that kind of professional 
services aspect and partnering with clients and building those relationships with clients, but also, um, you know, being in a really supportive and friendly environment as well. I don't think it's, you know, quite what it used to be. Um, it's definitely more kind of balanced in that respect. Um, but yeah, definitely, I do a lot of experienced hire recruitment as well. So I can honestly say, um, chartered accountants tax advisors are very sought after um, we're, and I'm sure everyone else can um, can uh, say that as well so yeah definitely like a career that will um, provide you with with lots of pro progression and opportunity yeah definitely it's good to hear that there's, that there's quite an, an equal balance between both sides so yeah thank you for that thank you all um, I will mix up the order so it doesn't so I'm not being <laughs> Lizzie and Emma last every time um, so kind of following on from um, one of Sarah's points actually our next talking point um, is around a lot of students who might think they need a numbers degree or in the case of tech roles a science degree or you know to work in finance um, as you said that's not the case um, but could you kind of expand on um, why that's you know not necessarily true that you need to be as you said number crunching and things like that so i'll start with sarah for this one yeah so i think because accountancy has changed so much it isn't just about the number crunching there are so many other skills that you can bring to the table i think any sort of degree is is relevant because there are skills that are transferable into it um with uh, working in the county practice for example a lot of what you're going to be doing you'll learn on the job so even though you do an accountancy degree yes that does give you a bit of prior knowledge but you don't necessarily get to grips with it until you're in the workplace learning it on the job. So it doesn't necessarily give you much more of an advantage than someone who doesn't have a relevant degree. Um, there are so many other skills, like I say, whether it's communication, team working, just the kind of general softer skills that you can bring to the role. And then everything else can be learned as you go. And uh, because we offer the professional qualification as well, that can then feed into what you're doing day to day. So it's a case of just being able to kind of bring sort of core skills to the job. That's really what we're looking for. Um, and as I say, like in terms of communication, teamwork, all those things that you can bring to the role that everything else can be learned when you're in the job because we have that environment and there's so many nuances within each role as well that you know even if you've learned it at university doing accounting and finance it can vary from client to client so you might then have to adapt the knowledge that you've already learned so I think the fact that we give all the training on the job and you get the professional qualification you will learn everything that you need to know as you go so sort of any prior knowledge doesn't you know doesn't mean that you're going to be better or worse at being an accountant I think it's about the other skills that you can bring to the role is, is really important. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, it's important to let people know that soft skills and anything that's transferable is just as valuable as if you had the technical skills, because I think that's probably a bit of an assumption with, with finance roles. So it's definitely um, useful to hear. So thank you. Um, Emma, did you have anything additional you wanted to add from your experience? Sure. And I think, to be honest with you, that our methodology, I think, is probably quite similar to, to Sarah's in, in the way that we sort of assess candidates and bring people through the process. So we've actually completely removed our um, sort of minimum requirements for degrees and, and new cast points. So we look at it at a lot more sort of a holistic view in terms of looking at you as a whole person. And um, so we we basically take uh, take our early careers joiners on um, with a with what we call a strong academic background. So we kind of look through your entire academic history and then make a decision based on based on that basically um, and I think for us like you said Sarah it's really important that the soft skills effectively are, are what make you who you are and how you're going to interact with clients and your teammates um, we're also as Lizzie was saying we're very sort of people centric as a firm so we have what we call our good people wheel and that our good people you know do good work and they attract good clients who will in turn pay good fees and then we reinvest that in our good people so that's kind of how we're always working and um, so I do think from 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 my personal view yes you know your academics are important you have to be analytical in your approach in the way that you you know in the way that you approach certain tasks but at the same time we need to know that you're a good communicator that you can work well as a team that you're a good listener you know all these different soft skills that are completely transferable from any background um, and also just to add on to that point we, we we're open to any discipline so it doesn't have to be you don't have to specifically have come from a, a finance background and um, you know we, we've got auditors who potentially had a drama degree or a geography degree it could be from any background that you come to us and you know I think it's that understanding as you said Sarah that you know everybody's joining at the same level you're all joining from from ground zero and it's building you up and it is teaching you the skills of how to how to become a chartered accountant or whatever you know 
route that you may well go down. Um, and also, again, just in terms of the variety of roles that we offer, you could join us in your in our sustainability team, for example, or you could join us as an ethical hacker. So there are so many different routes that you would go down that having that finance and you know, mathematics background or whatever it may well be, it's not always relevant. So I think it's it's sort of taking it back to those soft skills um, that we really value. And I know a lot of us in the room probably do as well. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you. I think even from my understanding of finance, I didn't realise there was so much flexibility with your kind of degree background and your skills and experience. So it's really useful to know that you can kind of, yeah, come from lots of different backgrounds and still apply yourself and um, succeed in a career in finance. So, yeah, thank you. Um, Christina, I noticed you've been agreeing <laughs> with a lot of it. Is there anything, <laughs> is there anything kind of from your experience that you'd like to input? Yeah, um, I think... Obviously, um, you know, I agree with um, what, what's been said before. I think certainly for us, um, I have to be honest about the type of work that you would actually be doing and you'll be dealing with numbers. And so actually there does need to be a love of numbers um, because ultimately if you don't enjoy that, then you're not going to enjoy the job. So um, in sort of being quite transparent, um, I will just sort of say that if you have a love of numbers and um, then that gets you so far, but certainly, um, you know, we, we give training on the job. So, so as the others have said, we don't expect any prior knowledge around project finance or financial modeling. Um, we give all of that training when someone starts, but ultimately you are looking at Excel spreadsheets um, that are detailing quite complicated cash flows. Um, and so I think if that's not the sort of thing that, that you're interested in, um, then perhaps sort of project finance and, and financial modeling isn't um, sort of um, what you're after. But but certainly um, there are a lot of skills that, that you can bring. Um, it isn't just about that analytical side of things. You know, we do an awful lot of working in a team um, and particularly that's even more important when working in a smaller organization um, because you get that opportunity to, to work with everyone. And, and there's a real sort of collaborative and, and supportive nature to the work that we do. But it's also really important that the communication um, and that working sort of together um, is really there so yeah that, that's sort of uh, what I, I wanted to, to add. Yeah definitely I think <laughs> like you said, it's important to manage expectations as well as letting yeah. people know that there's flexibility you know you kind of have to know what you're getting into <laughs> if you do enter career yeah. finance you have to have that you have to have that foundation so yeah thank you. Um, Lizzie, Lizzie or Charlotte do you have anything additional you'd like to add that you think hasn't been said yet or do you kind of no, I think just reiterating the same. We take any yeah. degree discipline or any kind of A-level subjects. Um, and I, again, like Sarah and um, Emma said, it's really important for us to have someone that's, you know, got that right attitude that, um, you know, demonstrates our core values, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, on touching on what Christina said, though, I think it helps, you know, part of it is numbers based. We can't get away from that and say it's completely kind of, you know, about that advisory or kind of building those client relationships. That's just really important. I think it's just it's good yeah for everyone to know that there is that kind of flexibility um but it does help to have a kind of interest in the in the numbers side as well but there's so much kind of software out there now that will help people to do that aspect of it um which is why i think a lot of us are kind of moving towards that advisory side as well yeah definitely thank you and charlotte did you have anything you wanted to add yeah, I mean, I, I just agree with, um, you know, what the other ladies have said there. Um, we do assess numerical intellect as part of our process, and I'm sure I'll, I'll mention that a bit later. Um, but it's just one of the things that we assess, and absolutely we're looking at your creativity and your relationship building and adaptability. Um, and, and those things are, you know, just as important for success in the role. And our programmes, school leaver and graduate, are apprenticeships, so they're developing your knowledge your skills your behaviors so um it's important to have those aspects kind of coming in and then we as the employer and your training firm will then support you in developing those skills further yeah definitely thank you and as charlotte said we will get on to the kind of recruitment process and and what all the different companies use but it's, it's it's useful to know that you're being assessed on a few different things you know there's not just there's not just one element so that's that's really useful thank you um, so our next point, I know you've kind of touched on the variety of, of sectors within finance and even within accountancy, there might be some, you know, there's lots of subcategories within categories. Um, so I think the next talking point is with so many roles that are available for students, how can they work out kind of which area of finance specifically they'd like to work in or what would suit them with there being so many different routes they could take. Um, if I start off with Lizzie, as I know I've kind of been getting to you <laughs> towards the end um, for your thoughts on this one. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think um, obviously doing your research is really important. Um, 
if um, we often run kind of webinars, especially around the graduate recruitment season um, with some of our trainees. So we'll often have like a audit account and tax trainee on there. Um, so you can really get an idea of actually what is the day to day involved in different um, in the, each of the different kind of pathways. So what I would do is kind of recommend um, if you're kind of on LinkedIn or other social media, follow some of our company pages so you can see when those events are happening to give you a bit more of a taster into what each of those mean. Um, what we can also do as well, if you get in contact with us, we can try and kind of set something up for you to speak to a trainee in one of those service lines so you can get more of an idea of an insight into which is for you. Um, for example, audit, um, our audit trainees can be out on client site quite a bit. So if you're not someone that likes to kind of go out and spend time um, in different businesses, then that might not be for you. Um, so I think it is good to kind of have a look into those, whether it's through your own online research or making contact, building connections on um, LinkedIn, building your network on there with people that are in those roles that you might be interested in. Yeah, definitely. I hadn't even thought of LinkedIn as a as a first thought. So that's really that's really useful point. So thank you. Um, if I go to Charlotte next, please. Yeah, sure. I mean, as Lizzie said, I think preparation and kind of research is key. So looking at employer websites, um, but also in, in roles like these where they're very qualification based, looking at the qualifications themselves, doing your research on the ACA or the CCA, doing a bit of uh, acronym demystifying and just seeing kind of what routes you can take once you have those qualifications is really key. Um, but also attending events like this is, is great. You know, the power of conversation is, is a way that you'll really learn about different employers and industries uh, and see where your interests and strengths uh, align best. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, I mean, with any role, I suppose, you know, employer research is important, but when there's so many sectors and so many different roles that could suit you, it's it's particularly important with finance, I suppose. So, yeah, thank you. Um, if I go across to Sarah for your for your insights. Yeah, so I think very much mirroring what's already been said, to be honest, I think just do your research. Don't be afraid to reach out to companies and um, speak to individuals. If you see anyone on LinkedIn, connect with them, ask questions. Just don't be afraid to ask. I think that's kind of one of the key things we look for when we're recruiting is people that are kind of taking a keen interest and actually going the extra mile to find out the information. Um, so yeah, attending as much as you can, speaking to as many people as you can, trying to build that network before you even begin, which will then also help you as you progress in your career, having those connections from the get go even when you graduate and um, so just trying to sort of build that also trying to think about when you're looking at what the roles entail the different skills within that and then what sort of skills you feel your strengths are so for example if it's an audit are you quite analytical are you got to look into the detail and the nitty-gritty just trying to kind of think about what those tasks are and what those key skills are and where you feel your strengths lie and then how that can translate into the role I think is probably really important yeah definitely really important points there thank you um if I just put the same question to Emma and Christine if you had anything specifically that you think has been missed or you agree anything you'd like to add do you want to go first Christina or are you yeah sure, yeah, sure. um I think um certainly the things that I'd sort of thought about was certainly the research and, and utilizing the connections that you have um and I think sort of touching on um Sarah's point um around just have a think about what's matter what matters to you it's a two-way relationship um a, a career um you know you Again, as Sarah said, whilst we'd like someone, um, you know, we want someone to, to join the company and to stay. Um, and so as much as you're able to sort of know what you're getting yourself into um, before you start. Um, so have a real think about what sort of matters to you. Um, you know, do you want to have an impact? Do you want to know the sort of work that you're going to be doing? Just sort of have a real think um, about what, what it is that you want out of the out of the job. Um, and I think also um, just sort of see, you know, the internet, there's so much um, stuff out there and actually very specifically for project finance and financial modeling. Um, believe it or not, financial modeling has actually become an esport. Um, and so you can see it in action. Um, if you Google sort of the financial modeling World Cup, um, you can get experience with it with the kind of case studies and the challenges um, that um, come out of sort of financial modeling. So you can have a go yourself um, to see if it is the sort of thing that, that interests you. So um, yeah, really utilize sort of um, the assets that are out there and, and the things that are, your, are at your disposal really. Yeah, definitely yeah. kind of make the most of the time you have before before you're applying for the job as much research and like you said making the most of all the resources that you can so yeah thank you mm -hmm. emma did you have any kind of last points on that one 
Um, yeah, no, I would just mirror exactly, Christian, you, you nailed it. I think research is really important. There's so much out there to be able to give you a good feel in terms of what's out there in the market. Um, and I think it's a bit of a two-prong two -prong approach. God, try saying that again. Two-prong approach in terms of, um, you know, doing your research, having a look and sort of seeing what, what skills uh, do you have that would fit into that. Also, things like having a look at job descriptions. I'm sorry if, if anybody's touched on that already, if I've missed that. But, um, you know, I know, for example, like with our job descriptions, it will sort of, it will, it'll have there what your first three years at the firm will look like and the sorts of jobs that you're going to be taking on sort of you know within your first three years at the firm so that's also a really good insight in terms of you know matching what interests you and what you think you could see yourself doing for the next couple of years whilst you're training um but yeah as well as well as that like I said it as, as the girls have sort of alluded to um I think it's about doing your research and really sort of internalizing your own skill set and seeing where you can bring your strengths to the table and sort of trying to find a happy balance or a role that fits both your skill set and also what interests you yeah definitely thank you it's, I mean I'm sure I mean I remember it's quite a tricky time when you're trying to figure out where to apply to and what to apply to so I'm sure you kind of provided some reassurance um on how to approach that <laughs> so yeah thank you all um leading on from um, from kind of utilising the most of what's out there and making connections before you apply. I suppose it'd be interesting to move on to work experience, not only to add to your CV, but also when you're applying for a job, if it's requiring some kind of work experience and you feel panicked that maybe you haven't got relevant experience, what would you say is kind of relevant work experience that you could add to a CV? And then perhaps, you know, work experience that not necessarily industry related, but how they could develop relevant you know, transferable experience or skills. Um, sorry, that was quite a hefty question. <laughs> if you can pick that up. Um, I think I'll start with Christina this time, please. Yeah, sure. Um, I think actually your question sort of um, answered it um, as well around sort of, I think that the real focus for us is that we don't um, assume any prior knowledge in project finance or financial modelling. Um, and so actually what's most sort of relevant is the sorts of skills that we're looking for and that's mentioned in the job description. And those are more the transferable skills so um, it's getting experience sort of working as part of a team having that experience already maybe of um, you know working in a company what it's like um, to um, work in an office environment um, you know kind of presentation skills um, any sort of leadership skills so anything that you're able, able to do um, sort of through societies or extracurricular activities that you do um, and even things sort of like problem solving um, you know how you approach um, different challenges those are sorts of the things that I think you're then putting into practice um, and those are the sorts of things that we would sort of look out for more than sort of really specific type of placement or internship um, it's really about those transferable skills and, and what you've gained um, through those. Definitely I suppose it's similar it's um it's similar to when you think you need to have a specific background in maths or something technical when actually, like you said, if it's something transferable and it's relevant and you can apply it, you know, it's just as useful to put in there. So kind of anything that you can that you can apply. So, yeah, thank you. Um, if I come across to Charlotte next um, for any of your advice on this one. Sure. Yeah. So, so similarly, um, we also don't require any specific work experience at all um, because of the level of technical training that's provided. But there's absolutely transferable skills through work experience, whether that's voluntary roles, part time roles, um, you know, internships or work experience. Adaptability, for example, is one skill that we we look for throughout the recruitment process. And that in itself is something we've all had to demonstrate over the last few years of constant change. Um, so I think we'd just encourage applicants to consider the competencies that companies are looking for and how they've demonstrated that and thinking of those examples ahead of time. Um, and if you don't have specific corporate work experience, um, you know, we assess commercial awareness, but that doesn't mean you need work experience. Actually reading the news, keeping up with current affairs, being able to talk to changes in the sector, in the industry, or what's happening in the world and how that might impact our clients or our business um, is really important and shows that same kind of insight and understanding. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Really useful points. Um, Lizzie, if I go over to you for anything additional to add. Yeah, I think the only thing 
I would but maybe add is it's always good to have a look if you are interested in a specific firm have a look at their you know what are their values and how you might be able to demonstrate those so for example we have our star values which is service teamwork attitude and relationships so you don't and again we don't look for um, our entry level roles to have specific work experience in the sector so it's just think about how you can kind of demonstrate um, those in other ways whether you know through any of the ways that, that have already been suggested um you know teamwork you might play a sport um that you can kind of show how you've worked as part of a team service you might have worked in retail or in hospitality again it's not in the same sector but you will have had to show really good customer service in those roles so yeah it doesn't necessarily have to be relevant um but there are other ways of demonstrating it to try and think outside the box i think and have a look at, at core values and things like that yeah definitely thank you um and sarah and emma if there's anything that you think has been missed or anything important you think needs to be added any thoughts um, no i think probably just mirroring everything that's been said to be honest i think the key things are just trying to think about skills that you have gained in your life no matter what kind of where that's come from whether it's through university projects so we know particularly during covid it was a lot more difficult to get opportunities there weren't as many opportunities out there so just anything at all that you think that you've been involved in within your life whether it's professional or personal there's loads of ways that you can kind of demonstrate your skill set and i think as well passion is another thing so even if it's not something you have experience of demonstrating that you've done your research you understand and what it entails and like just demonstrating how and, and why you want to get into that area I think that's quite important I think something to mention from our perspective is we don't use CVs in the recruitment process you submit your CV but we don't necessarily use that when it comes to interviewing it's blind um, blind interviews almost so it's more about kind of how you're kind of selling yourself and your skills rather than us being able to see what prior experience you have so you know trying to make everyone kind of on an even playing field in terms of the interview process so yeah just how you can really show the skills that you've gained no matter where that's from in your life um, and how that would then translate into the job that you're going to be doing. Yeah that's a great point actually because I think when a lot of people approach writing out their CV they might purposely miss certain points because it doesn't seem relevant or something they, a society a university they joined or something that they ran or a project it doesn't always seem fitting or relevant but it's, it's important to know that that it can be transferable and it is something that you could apply to to a career in finance so yeah that's really great thank you and Emma did you have any any additional thoughts? Yeah, well, actually, my point sort of rolls on very nicely from Sarah. So all I was going to say was at Mazars, we do a lot of upskilling sessions and development sessions, and that's something that I sort of lead on. Um, and when I'm sort of um, training students and, you know, different people, um, I think one of the things that I like to talk about is the STAR method. So I know a lot of professional services firm throughout the interview processes, they'll they'll use competency-based questions. So, it, you know, give me an example of a time that you've used, I don't know, leadership or that you've shown, you know, determination or whatever it may well be. And I think really what we're trying to get from that is how you can tackle those questions because sometimes they can be a complete curveball and really throw you off I mean from personal experience when I was younger and starting out you know those those questions kind of terrified me and um, so I think preparing and having like you said you know being able to reflect on any experience whether it's you know something from be it a club or you know a hobby that you might have or a sports team that you're part of it doesn't necessarily have to be in a professional setting it's it's any example where you've shown those you know shown those skills be it teamwork or leadership it could be that you've been part of a scout team and you've found you know you've managed to I don't know find your way back on a trail or whatever it could have been it doesn't have to be sort of specific to professional services and I think it's just about how you respond to that question and um, I don't know if, if we have time to discuss it in full but um, definitely for if anybody's listening and they're interested there's a there's a, a method called the star method and that sort of helps you um, in terms of how you answer the question so you're sort of it, it gives you a whole breakdown in terms of how to how to structure your answer to competency-based questions um, but I definitely recommend having a look at that offline potentially and um, sort of help you with those experience-based questions. Yeah thank you for that Emma, nicely tied up that question I think, <laughs> thank you. Um, so what I'll move on to next is an in, in preparing for applying for a job, I mean, there are some companies that might disclose their recruitment process and there are, you know, you can read up on different types of recruitment process, but I think it's important to get kind of some in, insight from different companies because I know it can kind of be subjective to the to the role in, in terms of what you need to assess for a candidate. So if I kind of go around and get a bit of an idea on what your um, recruitment process is at your company when you're recruiting graduates, um, just for a bit of insight for those listening. Um, so if I start off with, Emma with this one if you could give us a bit of an overview. 
Absolutely. So I can imagine all of us girls are probably going to have quite similar answers. So I'll just sort of briefly give you an overview of what our recruitment process looks like. So um, first of all, you would start off, have a look on our website and you'd find like a location and a, and a job that was interesting to you. So you would submit your online application. So at that point, we would then be in touch with you and we would send you over your testing. So you would do a numerical or a reasoning um, testing. So that's just basically understanding as Charlotte sort of alluded to before, your understanding of numbers and how you prioritise tasks and all that sort of thing. And um, so once you've done your testing with us, we will then invite you for a telephone call. And um, so before you have your telephone call, we'll set up what we call a coaching call with one of our um, careers advisors, one of our recruiters, just to have a bit of a chat with you in terms of your motivation behind the role and squash out any nervous, or, you know, any, any worries or queries that you might have before you have your sort of first interview stage being the telephone stage. And um, so then we'll, um, we'll invite you for your telephone interview. You, if you're successful at that point we'll then invite you to an assessment center which is kind of your your final big um se uh, section within the recruitment process and um, before um you would join us on your assessment center again we would um, set up a mentoring call and that would be with a trainee in the business so somebody specifically within the office and also the service line that you'd be joining so again that's an opportunity for you to have a really good chat to somebody who's doing the job that you're applying for to really understand you know what that role is about what sort of skills that you're you know that we would be wanting to look for kind of give you a bit of a you know a final little um opportunity to get all the inside knowledge before you join us for an assessment center um, and then you like i said you'd reach your final stage which would be your assessment center with us um, and that would compromise of things like a group exercise you'd have a one-to-one -one interview with a key stakeholder within the business um, and again lots of opportunities for you to sort of network and and, and talk to trainees within the firm um, and then basically after that after you've been through that whole process um, we would then be in touch to sort of make you an offer to join our firm um, um, so yeah, that's kind of our, our, our recruitment process as a whole. Great, thank you. Before I go around, does anyone have a recruitment process at their company that is slightly different um, to the one at Maisel's or would you like me to just work around if anyone wanted to jump in? Um, oh, I was slight, oh. yeah, sorry. No, 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 you've done anything. <laughs> I was going to say ours is slightly different, but like very similar. Um, we have an online application form. So one thing I would say at that point, because we're asking some kind of motivational questions about why have you chosen to apply for us? Um, so I'd, I'd just say, it, you know, at that point, really kind of get across there that you've done a little bit of research, what you think it is about us that makes you want to join us and why have you want to like pursue a career in accountancy. Um, at that stage, we would um, send out the numerical test same and then I would go to assessment center which is um a group exercise and presentation an opportunity to meet some of our trainees some of our managers and partners um on that day as well I think it I can't remember if it was Christina or Sarah earlier said it's a two-way thing it's about you finding out if we're right for you as well so there's a lot of opportunity at that assessment center to ask our trainees questions and things like that um, and then we would invite you in um for an interview in the local office um to meet those managers and you would go through an interview and then we'd go on to offer so our assessment centers are still majority um kind of virtual at the moment we did start introducing some face-to-face -face ones back in um this year again we'll review that for next year as to um what we think works best and what we think the preference is for candidates um to make that experience better um but yeah that's kind of how ours go so very similar but just with a few slight differences cool thank you and if we go over to christina for yeah, yours thank thanks Stacey. um ours is quite different and I think it's it's purely down to the size that we're a much smaller organization um and and so we're not recruiting on the same numbers um as well um so it is a fairly straightforward um process and what we try and make sure is that our process reflects what it's like to work at Opris um and to give that to give an insight um into the role and make sure it is what what you're looking for um so firstly there's an application form so so that part is the same um, and there would be the opportunity then to upload your CV and a cover letter. Um, those are the two main things that, that we use with our um, recruitment um, and that is reviewed by a member um, of our HR team. Um, we then have a two-stage interview process um, 
the first stage of the virtual interview, but it is with um, a member of our HR team um, and also a member of the analytical team. So someone that started off in that analyst role. So, so the role that you're applying for, they will have started in that same role. So they have that experience. Um, and so we asked some questions about you, um, just about um, your CV. And then we do uh, talk through some number puzzles, um, but it is all done um, virtually, but it, but it is sort of face to face. Um, and then if successful from that first round, we then have a second interview. Um, and that involves preparing a case study um, in advance. Um, and during the interview, um, you would then be talking through that case study with more senior members of the analytical team. Um, but again, because of the way that um, Opera is and the way that we progress people through the organization, typically those are people, whilst they're senior now, they started as an analyst um, again. So they can remember what it was like um, to be an analyst um, and, and start out so again you talk through your case study um, talk a little bit about you and your experience and do a few more number puzzles um, those second interviews where possible we do them face to face so you come into the office um, get an opportunity um, to, to see the surroundings and get to meet people um, face to face and we do also organize a more sort of informal um, meet and greet session um, so that you're um, you can ask some sort of um, other questions that might not have come up in in the um, interview just to get a little bit more of an insight um, I think one thing just to sort of to to say is that um, whilst interviews and, and the recruitment process is, is, is nerve wracking, um, we don't ever want people to worry about the process. Um, so whilst there are number puzzles and, and, and whilst there is a case study, um, it's also seeing how you might respond to those. Again, as we've all sort of spoken about, um, you get a lot of training on the job. Um, and so it's just seeing how you respond um, to when people are um, asking you about new concepts or, or talking you through something um, and also Again, if you didn't enjoy doing the case study, then it might be that the role's not right for you. Um, so whilst they can seem a little bit daunting, um, it, they're not there It's to, to do that. They're more just to sort of give an insight and to make sure that you're getting a really sort of realistic look um, at what exactly the role is about and, and the company. But yeah, so it's a slightly different um, uh, uh, recruitment process, um, but ultimately all trying to, to do the same thing. Yeah. No, yeah, but it's really, it's really helpful to know that different company sizes and depending on what they're recruiting for, that it could differ. I mean, like a few of you have said, sometimes it's stated on the company um, website, but sometimes if it's not, it's just useful to familiarise yourself with the different processes between employers. So that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, and lastly, if we end with Charlotte, if you have, um, if you could explain your recruitment process. Yeah, sure. I mean, very similar to what Lizzie described. Um, so we have a anonymous Screening process is the application form. So an online application form with a couple of eligibility questions um, and four questions that are more around your motivations for applying to the role and, and to more Kingston Smith itself um, and, and some other competencies as well. We then go on to an interactive assessment that looks at your potential for things like numerical intellect, um, but also other aspects such as grit um, and digital mindset, creativity, all things that we think are really important for success in the role. And those competencies are assessed throughout. Then into the assessment centre, which again at the moment is primarily virtual, but also gives you an opportunity for not only for us to get to know you through a presentation exercise and group activity and interview, but also a, a Q&A with a couple of our trainees that you can really get to know us as a firm. Um, and then the final stage is again, you know, an in-person interview in the office, which is really important, we think, for, uh, for, for the candidates themselves to see the offices. Can you see yourself working there um, and meet some of the team and get a bit of a feel for the office environment? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. That's a really important point. It's really it's useful that you've said that um, it's just as much about getting to know the company as the company is assessing you and getting to know you as well. It's kind of a two way, a two way thing. So thank you all for that. Um, just time wise, it's probably best that we move on to questions from the question box. But thank you all um, for going through those talking points with me and for some really useful insights. Um, but I will move on to the questions and have a look at the top voted ones. So the most popular question we've got so far is what does career progression look like at your organisations? Um, so, yeah, that's got a few votes. If I just open that up to the panellists, whoever wants to kind of jump in and answer that one first, feel free. 
Um, I think within assets, I think that takes many different forms. I think for us, progression is very much down to an individual and what they want to do and what they want their progression to look like. So that can look quite linear. So you might want to be within an audit profession. You might, might want to move into like a more management role, you know, actually um, kind of um, having some responsibility over teams and, and client relationships. Some individuals, they might want to take a sidestep. So you might want to start in a certain area within the business and you might think, actually, no, I want to then kind of either specialize in a particular sector or you might want to then actually move into a whole different role and um, so you might start an audit for example and then you might be interested in corporate finance or restructuring so it's just there's lots of different opportunities and I think progression is very much what you make it and what you want it to be there's lots of different opportunities there whether that's to specialize in a technical perspective or a team management perspective and um, there's lots of different opportunities there even within the professional qualifications as well there's there's multiple different qualifications that you can work through so if you wanted to take the opportunity to do further qualifications so you might start with the AAT for example and then you might want to then kind of progress into the next levels then that's an opportunity to progress as well so yeah development and progression I think is very much what you make it the opportunities are there and it's just what you really want from your career I would say. Yeah I think that's really nicely answered actually because what from gathering from what you what you've said so far there's obviously quite a bit of freedom within sectors to kind of move around and, and figure out um, what you'd like to do and progress to and, and move along to so yeah that's really helpful. Does anybody else have anything else they'd like to add to that point or Sarah kind of covered covered that answer? I think for us we do have a really clear kind of upwards progression structure if you like I know Sarah said obviously there is that opportunity to move around and everyone's journey is different um, and we have had people that have started in audit and gone into like corporate finance as well um, but if you do just kind of want to stay within that service line we've got um, role profiles at each stage so you can go from obviously off from your training contract onto the staff contract once you're qualified um, and then you can move your way up right through all of the kind of management levels director level and we've had trainees that have um, developed and are now partners of the firm as well so there is that real kind of upwards um, progression um, if that's what you want but also yeah the opportunity will always try and um, facilitate you know people's different kind of journeys that they want to go on as well yeah definitely that's great. Yeah, I was just, I was yeah. just going to add on from Lizzie in that um, it, it's similar for us at Opris and actually you can you can see in some of our um, sort of staff profiles on our website. So our COO, um, she started out as an analyst um, and she's moved through the organisation. There was a really clear progression um, for her, um, but then there was discussion around where she wanted her role to go um, and it and it all there was there was conversation about it. So there is a clear sort of progression pathway um, for when you start as an analyst and, and you move through sort of to consultant, senior consultant, manager, associate director. There are there it, it's laid out, but as the others have said, it, it is sort of um what you you make of it and that opportunity to sort of specialize. But one of the things that I would always say about career progression is making sure that you have that conversation um and and talking to your sort of development manager about what you want out of the role because the only way that they are able to support you with that is by knowing what you want and whilst the opportunity might not be there there and then that it will be at, on their mind to make sure that you're getting that opportunity um, and so we offer um, and have sort of quarterly reviews that that opportunity to meet every three months to talk about sort of progression um, we understand that um, you know it's a very fast moving world and the way that people um, you know the the opportunity um, you know, we want to make sure that um, people are getting out of, um, you know, of their role, what they want to. Um, otherwise, you know, there's lots of competition around us. So make sure you have that conversation um, with um, your employer, um, because I'm sure there will always be opportunities um, and they will make sure um, that they are able to sort of support you. Yeah, definitely. Never underestimate having a conversation or asking a question, <laughs> just, <laughs> just starting that dialogue. So yeah, that's really great. Thank you. Um, the next question that's been upvoted is having limited exposure to the financial service lines, how would you go about determining which service line you want to apply for? You no know, kind of similarly been one of the talking points, but if anyone had anything that they'd like to input for that question. 
I'm, I'm happy to jump on if, if mm -hmm. everybody else is okay. Um, I, all, all, yeah, I was just kind of going to mirror what we sort of said before, Lacey, in terms of I think it's really important that you have a little bit of a look around and it's having those conversations with people. So, you know, it's taking the opportunity to join things like webinars, like that, that one that we're on right now, and, you know, coming to Insight Days, coming down onto campus, you know, speaking to people at careers fairs. It's having those conversations and being able to ask the questions, you know, what sort of work am I going to be getting involved in? What am I going to be doing on the day to day? You know, how am I going to be interacting with clients? And again, I think it's, it's, it's I guess, deciding for you what you want to be doing or what you want to be getting out of a job and, and how you can, you know, how you can match that with a firm, basically. So I think it's really important that, you know, you kind of put the work in to have a think about what you want to be doing um, before you go down the route of sort of where can I go, what route should I go down? Because it can get very overwhelming. Um, but mm -hmm. I think the important thing is to really sort of draw it back to what interests me, what am I naturally good at? And then finding somewhere on that spectrum that fits, you know, fits that job, I think. Yeah, definitely. As you said, it's something that we kind of went over earlier but it's nice to have some kind of final bits of advice on that to go away with so that's really useful thank you um the last question i think we'll have time for it's quite a few in one but um i suppose it can kind of be opposed as kind of your experience in finance as a whole um so it's essentially when you first started your career what did you expect going into it were you worried about anything how was the experience and you know had you expected something else essentially what has your experience been like from the time you started in finance to where you are now what's what's kind of some pointers that you'd say for our kind of last question to anyone that wants to take it <laughs> i'm sorry to jump on this one again but i just wanted to quickly just say my bit and then i'm done um mm -hmm. i was just going to say from somebody who doesn't actually come from a financial background i am um, sort of have had a very eclectic uh, career. I've been in all sorts of industries and I sort of fell into professional services. And I think, you know, my, I guess my, um, what's the word, preconceived judgment of professional services was that it was quite stuffy and it was quite, um, you know, uh, regimented and it wasn't very creative. Um, but actually in, in coming into that environment, I've been completely proven wrong. I think you'll often find that um, there are so many different colleagues that come from similar backgrounds, very different to what I would expect finance backgrounds to be. Um, and I think it's what you make out of it. You know, my role is incredibly creative in terms of what I do. Um, and I think that there are so many, as we've said, and we've all touched on this afternoon, I think there are so many different pathways and avenues that you can go down in professional services. Um, I think it really is what you make out of it. Um, but yeah, completely different to anything that I expected really. And that this is such a, a different mixed, you know, mixed bag of individuals all working for sort of a similar shared purpose um, and I think with that you get so many different types of you know um, yeah yeah input or ideas and that sort of thing yeah thank you I think that's exactly what they were they were asking for when they asked this question so that's a really great answer thank you if anybody else wants to kind of give any of their own um, additional points or experiences they'd like to share just in our last kind of minute or so yeah I think um Oh, sorry, you go, Charlotte, you go. <laughs> I mean, it was just a really brief point just to kind of add to Emma's, just in the sense that I was also very pleasantly surprised coming from a different sector, coming into finance, um, whilst I sit in the people team. Um, but I was also really pleasantly surprised about the amount of initiatives going on as a sector and the kind of collaboration between firms to make the sector more accessible, more diverse. Um, and that's definitely kind of replicated within more Kingston Smith. But as I say, also working with other firms on those same initiatives, um, which is really great to see. Great, thank you. And Christina, if we get your thoughts, then we'll kind yeah. of wrap up from there. Yeah. And I think I am sort of echoing what um, Charlotte and Emma have said, but um, I also have a little bit of a, of a different background before I came and worked in finance, so working in the arts. And so I went from a very different background. And and again, I sort of had a little bit of a, a preconceived idea of what it was going to be like, um, but ultimately, we're all people um, and there are lots of different um, backgrounds and, and people are just really sort of supportive and want everyone to succeed. And ultimately, um, you know, it can be incredibly um, sort of daunting, but I think there's a lot more opportunity now. You're you're able to make those connections before you even start. So there's a lot of opportunity to know what, um, you know, what to expect um, before. So um, 
as we've all sort of spoken about, use and utilize those connections that you have, um, utilize your, your network. Um, and then that also sort of helps you um, when you get to start. And it's something that we do before someone starts, we'll put them in touch with their mentor so that they're able to have a conversation to sort of help with any of those nerves because they're um, completely understandable. Um, but every um, one that we sort of speak to and, and similar um, as others have said, um, you know, when someone starts, they are then pleasantly surprised that everyone is just a person and is more than happy to talk about quite complicated financial things, but also talk about Love Island in the kitchen as well. So, you know, it's a it's a great sort of mixture of, of people. Um, so, yeah, that was just my, my final comment. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I think that's really important. That's a really important closing point, actually. That there is a human element to this at the end of the day. And, you know, you can be pleasantly surprised by what you might find. Um, so, yeah, that's that's really great. And it's nice to know that you can kind of come from different backgrounds, still succeed in a, in a sector of finance. So that's really great. Thank you all. Um, that is all we've got time for. I know there's a few more questions left, um, but I'd just like to say thank you to our great panelists for joining us and giving your very useful insights and everyone for watching. And yeah, I think um, ben has put a link in the chat box, I think he's sharing something, um, for the upcoming webinar that we have next week. So it'll be on the 15th of June and it's for um, gradual opportunities that make a difference. Um, so I think Ben's put the link in there, but head over to a Target Jobs events page um, and click on that and you can find all the details and Ben's got the link in there. Um, but yeah, thank you all for joining. Thank you for your time. It's been really useful and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lacey. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.